Hello, everyone, and welcome. You know me, Lazaro Diaz. This is an introduction to the MCSA 70-740. So this is one, one of the server, Windows Server 2016 certifications. So there's really three you can take. The one that we're gonna do is the 70-740, which is installation storage and uh, compute with Windows Server 2016. There's one for networking with Windows Server 2016, and there's one to, uh, for identity, Windows Server 2016. And then there's a fast track, which means if you have a previous MCSA and you wanna just take this one to update that MCSA, you can, uh, and take the 70-743. But this is the MCSA 70-740, all right? And what do I expect? Obviously get your certification. This one, all right, in Server 2016. And then be able to navigate and configure Server 2016 with the topics they're gonna to be going over with. We're gonna be going over. Now that's important. Since there is three different exams and they're all three, and you only need one to get the MCSA, but all three are completely different. So what does that mean? Because get ready, because we're gonna go over a laundry list full of different roles and features and all sorts of things. Well, we may go over them, we may talk about them, what they do, but we're only gonna configure certain things that are pertinent to this particular certification. Not all the roles. That's a, there's a misconception out there, a real huge misconception, all right, that is one person that's gonna handle the entire you know, Active Directory domain, that they're gonna do everything and all the certificates are, that no, if you're working for a small company, all right, or cheap company, that wants you to do everything that encompasses a server, then they're, they better be paying you, yeah, way into the six figures, if not close to seven, all right? Because that's a lot of things that you need to not only know where they're at, okay, but know exactly what they do and then the configurations of it. This is not something that you just can, oh, and no. It takes its time and it takes planning before you even install it, all right? And these are things that we're gonna be talking about at the beginning. So my expectation is, one, read, read the book. I don't care what book, if it's the Microsoft, 70-240, uh, if it's a Cybex, if it's whoever, okay, created a Microsoft 70-740, whoever you use, okay, read it. Do the labs. Practice your own, okay? Do these things. Practice where these roles are at. If you don't practice this, yeah, you're gonna have a hard time in the certification because it's not just about reading it, like I said, uh, in other courses, and I've been on Facebook Live and all that. You gotta see what type of student you are. If you're gonna read a book, if you're gonna read a book and pass a test, man, you're it. You're the bomb, okay? But if you can't, I can't, okay? I have to read the books, I have to answer the questions in the chapter review, all right? And then I have to go over it maybe once or twice or three times. And then I wanna see a video all right, on how to do it, and I, I practice and practice and practice over and over and over. I'll install server 20 times, I'll install the different roles, I'll go, you gotta do that. That way, not only will you pass the certification, but when you go to an interview, you know what to do. If they put you in front of a server, you'll be able to know what to do. It's not about making PowerPoint look pretty, okay? It's not about that. Okay, it's about you knowing the information. That's what's important, all right? Or if I made a typo or whatever, or you know, my shirt, I mean, I'm just casual. It's gonna be like this the whole way through, all right? Relax, whatever, because there is a lot of information that you need to know that they're throwing out there, but in actuality, what you will be configuring and doing is gonna be pertinent only to this certification. But you know me, I'm always gonna give you a little bit more, all right? So, with that said, installing Windows Server 2016. What are we gonna go over? We're gonna go, we're gonna go over the features and advantages, 
of Windows Server, okay? Planning a Windows Server 2016. That's if I said in Cisco that planning any network, I've always said it, planning the network, designing the network, designing the security, all these things are extremely important. Just planning the installation of the server is important, okay? You need to decide. Some people are still not running 2016. They're still running 2012, 2012 R2, 2008 R2, okay? There's some people still running 2003. If it ain't broke, they don't want to fix it, right? If it's working for them, they're still using it. All right, whatever the case may be, just, you know, if, it, if you're good, I'm more power to you. But being in the IT field, they're going to ask you if you're moving jobs or moving up in your position or just getting into the, well, well do you have your 2016, 2012 R2 maybe certification? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have this? Let me see your paperwork. The whole stack of papers. All right? That you got to show, well, then you're qualified. But even though the people in there don't have any, oh, but they have experience. Really, they do. Okay, so I'm just going to walk in there and say, okay, well, here's 2016. Go ahead and install it. I'll just sit back and watch your fully experienced person install it. Go ahead. And they'll probably will. As, you know, they get clicked next because it's going to ask you different questions than like before. It's a whole, it, there, it's very automated with 2016, okay? A lot of the different things that's already gets installed that before did not, all right? So planning is very important. Activating and servicing uh, Windows, definitely. There's different methods now we can use to activate our Windows. Using Windows deployment, this is nothing new. Those of you that work with, send, uh, with Windows, we know that we can go ahead and deploy our operating systems many different ways. Then we're going into an enterprise environment, automating. Definitely, we want to automate everything, right? So we're going to look at different ways we can do it. An overview of the deployment toolkit. This is something new. All right, toolkit 2013 update number two. All right, so we'll look, be looking at that. Unattended installations, we've done this before. Well, those of you that have been working with server, you've done this before. We'll look at that as well. Here we'll just briefly go over what Hyper-V is, which is not new to 2016. But a lot of people do use it out there. Virtualization is it. Everybody's virtualizing everything because you keep a smaller footprint. Because we're going to be talking about here as well, nested virtual machines. Not only creating a virtual machine, but creating a virtual machine within a virtual machine. So that's awesome. So we'll be talking about that throughout the course as well. All right. Configure storage and replication. Definitely you need to understand your file system. All right. And we're going to be looking at the different things that we can do with the storage, you know, you know, one quick example, quota, okay? Uh, yes, it's in there. And then configuring permissions. Again, when we start configuring permissions, if it's a, think of this as you're going through this course or you're studying your book, all right? You got to say, okay, first of all, why am I installing server? Why? What's the reason that you're installing server? Because there's a difference between work group permissions and domain permissions. So when, when we go into the planning and what have you, you need to decide. No, they're installing. Okay, what is the purpose of the server? Okay, what is it going to be? So, and that's going to make a big deal when it comes to this, to as far as configuring permissions and things of that nature. All right. Then we're getting to the nitty gritty of Hyper-V. I will right, we'll get into another overview of Hyper-V and we'll install and configure Hyper-V. We'll create a virtual machine, all right? If you don't have, if you don't know where to get the iOS for 2016, you can download it from Microsoft. It's free for 180 days and you can do it, all right? So, and if you don't have a physical machine, let's say you we're going to be running in VMware and it is, uh, it's recommended that you use VMware, uh, at least for lab purposes, because it's going to be quick. You can do many things. You can install clients, you can install other virtual machines, and you can network between back and forth. That will be easy. Instead of having, oh, man, I need a server, and I need the, at least another two clients, it's like you just do it in VMware. Uh, I do it in VMware. Okay? So you choose. All right? Definitely PowerShell commands. We're going to have to start learning PowerShell commands. Okay? Can't get away from that because 
especially with we have nano server which we'll talk about that later on all right but there's things in PowerShell that you can that you can do there that you can't do anywhere else and it has a, it's it's a, it's a very useful tool okay so definitely we'll be doing a lot of PowerShell commands all right that you need to know not only for the real world but for your certification all right all right so obviously maintaining Windows Server just like any computer that you would in your company you have to maintain the updates but Again, you know, if you have 3,000 computers, you're going to go one by one and update it? No, use your server to do the Windows Server update services, right? You're going to update all your clients, all your other servers, what have you, if you have files or whatever. It's going to update those OSs, all right? Understanding backups, PowerShell commands, all right? Uh, and understanding monitoring, right? Or use of performance tools. There's a lot of nice tools in 2016. All right, they can check the health and they can tell you, hey, this has a problem. And then you can go in there and find out, okay, why is this the problem? How can we fix it? It's like a, they can try and do an automatic fix. They made it better. All right. And you can see what's going on. So right at the beginning, at the beginning of the installation, it's right there, like a health monitor. Okay, which is pretty cool. All right. But backups, you really need to understand backups at this point. No. If you're brand new. To networking, if you've never took a networking class at all, all right? If you just took, let's say, I don't know, Windows 7, Windows 10, whatever the case may be, all right? And that's all you've taken, you still should know that backing up the information is important, all right? Especially those of you that work in medium to large size companies, enterprises, hospitals, government agencies. All these things are extremely important. You need to back up the information. All right, so we're going to be getting into that. All right, but it may look just a little bit. All right, and I went through it fairly quickly, but there is a lot of information because one of the first things that we're going to be talking about are the features, the roles, all right, the types of server, all these different things that we need to consider. All right, before we even begin the installation. All right, because I had to break the installation into two parts, believe it or not, okay? Into two parts so you can understand it better. And why? Why is it that you're putting a server? And the reason I'm saying this is not only because the book, you know, it's one of the things the book says, what have you, whichever book you buy, okay, by the way, uh, that talks about the server or a server. You may have just bought the Bible of servers. I don't know, okay? But for this particular certification, one of the things that it talks about is that. It says, why, why, you know, why, why are you using a server? Why are, what's its purpose? What's its reason for living? All right, so you need, you need to really think, okay, hey, boss, we need a server in a, in a network. Well, why is that? Well, it's because I like it. No, I, I've been to a company. That there's only not even six nodes on the network and they have a 2010 server a domain okay and and only there, there's only four computers in the domain the other two are not what's up with that what's the point really because you want to just make i don't know so Things to think about, things to think about. So we're gonna be going over all this again to reiterate my expectations. Your expectations of me is to teach you the topics you require to pass this 70-740. All right. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you my 100 percent that I'm gonna go ahead and give you that information. All right, we're going to do the labs. We're going to do the things that we need to do. All right, I can show you, I can talk to you about it so you can understand the concepts of it. But if you don't do your reading, if you don't do your review questions, if you don't practice it also, because this is not like Cisco where I have a packet trace and I can send it to you. No, no, no. These labs are here on my laptop and we're going to be doing them here. So 
stop, rewind, redo. Stop, rewind, and I'll go over and over and over again in the lab. Okay? So that's just the way it is. That's what you, my expectations of you is. Okay? You need to do your work as well. Oh my God, why is last talking all these things? Why can't you just do the lab and just tell me straight up what's, I'm going to be on the test? Can't do that. Doesn't work that way. And I don't want nobody going to an interview with a friggin' paper MCSC or MCSA and then can't install a role because they need a DNS server or a DACP. All right? That's who I am. And that's my uh, promise to you is to teach you, to show you concepts and understand what you're doing right, by creating these labs. The rest is up to you. Okay? So with that said, let's get started. I'll see you in the next.